In this video on C Sharp Basics, we'll be actually using an object. So first, you're going to declare your object variable and assign it a new instance of the class, which is something we've already done. Then we're going to assign values to the object's properties, followed by then calling an object's method and view the results. So let's get started. Here I have a new folder called using an object that I went ahead and created in our solution. And I'm just gonna grab one of these program.cs class files, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy it into this using an object folder. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, one of the things that I need to do now is, as, as you probably recall, and probably have done multiple times throughout this course, is we want to go ahead and change the namespace that this program class file is inside of. So I'm going to change the namespace from parameters to using an object, okay? Now next, I'm gonna go back to where we were previously in the declaring a property folder where we had this my class class object and we have all of our properties and we have our do math method and our add to integers. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this version of the my class class and I'm gonna go down here once again to using an object and I'm going to paste it inside of here. Now, once again, just like I did with the program class file, I need to change the namespace from declaring a property to using an object. Now, the reason why we wanna do this is because both the my class, ob uh, the my class, class and the program class both exist now inside of this using an object namespace, or more specifically, the basic.course.using an object namespace. So both of these exist in the same namespace. And that becomes important because now we don't have to reference the entire namespace. You can, you can go away, there we go. <laughs> now you don't have to use the entire namespace to reference that my class object. So I don't have to do using basic.course.using an object just to reference to this my class class. Since both of these class objects exist in the same namespace, they are both viewable automatically. Okay, so now inside of my main method, I'm going to create a new object of type my class. So we're gonna start with my class, which is the data type of this new variable. And this new variable is gonna be called my object, just like we have in the previous videos. Then we're going to assign it a new instance of the my class class. So we've done this before, this shouldn't be anything too foreign, but what we haven't done up to this point is actually use this new object called my object. If we take a look back in the my class class object, we have our value one property, our value two property, our do math method, and our add to integers method. Okay, so now if I go back here to the program class and I make, I, I, I'm going to actually reference the my object object using a period here or sometimes called dot notation, you can now see in the IntelliSense all of the methods and properties that are available on this my object. And you'll see they are just basically what are in the class, along with a few other things. This equals, get hash code, get type, and two string are actually default methods that are all available for all classes. Every single class that you ever create will have an equals, a get hash code, a get type and a two string method. That's because all classes by default already have these methods. And this has to do with something called inheritance, which we will talk about at a later time in this course. But for right now, just notice that do math method is available and value one and value two are available for this my object object. But you'll notice that the add to integers method is not visible. And that's because if we go back to the my class class, the value one property is marked public. The value two property is marked public. The do math method 
is marked public. However, the add to integers method is marked private. And this goes back to when we were initially creating the add to integers, I told you that the private uh, access modifier here, this private keyword here, means that the add to integers method is only going to be available from within this my class class. And we can see the proof of that here when we try to access it using the dot notation on the my object object. Okay, so we actually want to use this my object of type uh, of type my class. And the way that we set this class up to work was first we need to uh, put together some values, put some values in this value one property and this value two property before we can actually run the do math method because the do math method will then add two integers. We'll call this add two integers method, but it requires a value one and a value two parameter. Well, actually value two we can see is has a default value of zero. So we technically don't have to give it a value two just yet, but we're going to anyway in this demonstration just so that we can see it in action. Okay, so we need to put some values into these pro these properties before we can call this do math method so that it can then run the add to integers method. So let's go back to our program class and in our my object object, we're going to do value one and assign it a value of say four. Then for my object value two, let's assign it a value of eight. Now, once we have the values assigned to the class properties, to the object properties, I should say, now we can go ahead and reference that do math method that is on our class. So we'll do my object do math. But now we're going to see that there is, in fact, a red squiggly line. And uh, we haven't really gone too much into depth on this, but it's probably worth mentioning that even though methods may not require any sort of parameters, you still need to put the open and close parentheses at the end of a method. So all methods you'll see will have this open and closed parentheses, regardless of whether or not they require a parameter. Since the do math method itself has the console.writeLine and console.readLine in it, we don't need to do any of that from here inside of the program class because the do math class will actually write that to the console window for us. So let's go ahead and save our project. And then of course, one last thing that we, we have to do before we actually run this is this program class that is inside the using an object namespace is not set as the default class to run when the project starts. So we need to go back into the properties of the project and we need to change the startup object from declaring uh, uh, to uh, declaring an object. Instead, we want to use using an object. There it is, using an object dot program. So let's go ahead and save the project now and we can go ahead and exit out of the properties. And now we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and click on the start button and see what happens. So we should see that the results of the operation of do math simply combined the value of four plus eight and resulted in the value of 12.